Hello everyone! Now today I'm going to talk a little bit about Captain Skills. Now it's been about two weeks since the new Captain system has been released and I'm here to share some of my experience, some of my builds. Keep in mind I'm not playing carriers so you won't see any carrier specs and I'm not really playing open water gunboat destroyers so I can't give you much advice on that. And now let's get started with battleship. Now, the one point skills are mostly a bit lackluster as expected. I'd usually go for preventive maintenance. Incoming fire alert is useless. Emergency repair specialist is, well, it uh, <laughs> does do an awful lot now, does it? Consumable specialist could be interesting if you had like a main battery reload booster, but that's a very niche thing. Pyro technician only makes sense if you're going secondaries and you want that 1% more fire. And, uh, well, gun feeder. Some ships might benefit from this, like maybe a under but most of the time you're going to stick to it. Anyway, I suppose. Now, for the two pointers, we have AA gunner. <laughs> Useless. Uh, priority target. I love priority target for one points. I feel like I have trouble fitting it into my builds for two points. You know, it's, it's funny, right? They, in, uh, they increase the cost of priority target and of adrenaline rush by one point each. And then they gave us two more points. Well, they technically increased the maximum captain level, so you could have two. So they basically took the two most popular skills and just increased the cost by one point and then gave you the option to earn two more points if, if you complete an abysmal grind. Or I guess maybe just give them some money, you know? So uh, it's a bit... Uh, Bitter aftertaste. Now I can understand that they wanted to rebalance some things. I can understand that Adrenaline Rush is a free pointer. I would have liked priority targets to stay one pointer. But you know, just the argument that hey you have two more points to play with. Oh by the way, the uh, skills that you want are now one point more expensive and you don't actually get the two more points, you just have the ability to grind for them and it's going to be an abysmal grind. It just feels a bit like a cash grab. But, you know, anyway. Uh, vigilance. I mean, it's not a bad skill in that sense, but I feel like there are better options. Uh, consumable enhancements. You know, I mean, also a bit of a niche thing. You could fit it in when you're high. But then again, I feel like the ships that might want to take it don't have the points to take it anyway. IFAG. Now, this is mostly for, uh, well, it's actually only for your secondaries because, you know, battleship main guns don't need IFAG. So this makes sense on German battleships of tier 7, 8 and 9. And arguably maybe on the Massachusetts and George. I mean, thing is, ever since the IFAG changes a while back, IFAG isn't that great anymore for the Massachusetts because you don't get the 27mm pen anymore. You still get 25, though um, that would help, for example, against the Cleveland or so, but debatable right so yeah it, it's basically for <laughs> tier 7 8 and 9 german battleships uh turret traverse good skill for most battleships uh yeah <laughs> hey, hey. Uh, uh torpedo protection amazing skill unfortunately as it turns out that the ships that would need it the most don't have the points for it generally speaking basics of ability another decent skill but you know you're really starved for points with the new system adrenaline rush amazing skill actually a skill that somewhat promotes you'd say good gameplay because it rewards you for you know getting damaged so if your battleship's actually tanking and taking some damage for the team then you can benefit from it that's why it's gotten more expensive because if a skill is good for the game then you don't want people to skill it and if a game, uh, skill is bad for the game then you want everyone to get it or at least that's how walking works so uh long range secondaries obviously must have for secondary builds and then you have super heavy ip shells just no <laughs> uh, just no uh well we still have fire prevention around we still have concealment expert Emergency repairs, because, you know, battleships, uh, I don't know why they took away Superintendent, I guess Superintendent was too powerful. Also, that's uh, uh, four points now to get your additional heal charge. So, hey, I mean, maybe they can squeeze some more money out of people because they need to grind some more to, to get the skill points back. So, I know, I, I guess walking wins or something. Uh, close quarters combat, amazing skill for secondaries, uh, improved secondary aiming, well, obviously for secondary periods, and then we have Dead Eye, and oh boy, 
Jedi is, well, it, it's a strong skill, it's an overpowered skill. The problem is it promotes a lot of passive gameplay, as you might have noticed. A lot of people play even more passive than they used to because of this piece of shit. And it's even worse in a way because if you want to play aggressive, right, this skill gives long-range battleships more damage output in essence because they're going to hit better. And that means it's going to be harder to push against them because well, I mean, while you're trying to close the distance, you're going to take damage and it will take a while to get close enough to even deactivate the skill, right? And just the more long-range damage output there is in the game, the harder it is to push because you just get melted too quickly if you get closer. So, yeah, it's... Uh... I wish this skill wouldn't exist. It's very bad for the game. But, you know, Wargaming uh, doesn't really understand how the game works, so they're probably going to keep it. Now, with that being said, let's talk actually how Dead Eye works, because there's lots of confusion about it. So, it says, no visible hostile ships within the standard detectability radius. Now, the standard detectability radius is what you can see here in port, right? And that gets changed by, you know, your modules and your skills so if i were to uh take like a uh, concealment expert and it goes down here to 40 point uh 14.1 and that's basically would be the the you know let's master this for now so basically that's the number that you care about right uh planes don't matter line of sight doesn't matter the only thing that matters is is an enemy ship spotted within that radius right it doesn't uh, matter if there is an invisible ship there, it has to be spotted. If there's a destroyer six kilometers away from you and it's invisible, then you still have a bonus, right? As soon as it's spotted, you lose. If there is a Des Moines behind an island, like 10 kilometers away from you, and you can't see the Des Moines, you still have your bonus. Friendly planes come in, spot the enemy Des Moines, you lose your bonus, right? It's just, is a ship visible on the map within that radius? And that radius doesn't change, right? If you fire your guns, if you're inside a smoke screen, that radius doesn't change, right? The, the concealment you go into battle with, that you can see in port here before you start a battle, that is the range that matters. So what does this tell us? For example, right now for this Yamato, it would mean that 14.1 uh, kilometers, you are actually, even if you play sensible, you know, even if you are not at the border, you will get an awful lot of benefit from that eye. Because, I mean, uh, if you're sitting like at 18 kilometers, which is something reasonable for a Yamato to do, you'd be, uh, you'd be getting the benefit of the skill. There's probably a destroyer closer to you, but that's most of the time not visible and might be blinking in and out, you know. But, you know, 14.1, you can get relatively close. And if you have better concealment, it works even better. I mean, if we were to, uh, let's say, a Thunder, one of the uh, obviously more overpowered ships that exist, so, in in uh, our Thunderer, we would, if it's considered an expert, we would go down to 12.3. Now, the Thunderer isn't only relatively, relatively accurate, has amazing armor piercing and high explosive, it also has amazing concealment, which means that Dead Eye is obviously a sure pick on this thing. And you can have your bonus even if you're getting relatively close to enemies, so... But anyway, let's go back to Yamato. Now, I would pick that eye on most battleships, honestly, unless you're going for a real tank or brawler build. Uh, but now, you know, let's let's just build something, right? So what, what would you do? Uh, in a Yamato, you'd want to have that eye. Then you can have one more defensive skill. Obviously, you want Consumer Expert because it synergizes well with that eye. Then would you go Fire Prevention or Emergency Repair Expert? That's a question that I've asked myself a lot. I've tried both. I think Emergency Repair Expert is better, but it, it's situational. You know, it depends on how many high explosive ships are going to spam you. It depends where it's going to attack you. It depends on if you, well, if you live long enough to go through all of your healers, I suppose. Uh, keep in mind, this doesn't just give you a heal charge. It also, uh, the heal is active for longer, which means it heals more. So while you might be burning more, right, you can also recover more of the damage that you take from the fire. So it, it's hard to, I don't think there is a wrong choice between emergency reaction and fire prevention, but for now, I think emergency repair expert is a good pick. Obviously, I want to pick a adrenaline rush in a battleship. And if in a Yamato, you know, I 
You could go for enhanced torpedo protection here or for basic survivability of good picks. I mean, the Yamato already has pretty good uh, torpedo protection and, you know, more can't shot. So this would, for example, be a reasonable build for a Yamato, right? Now you could switch that eye for fire prevention for the ultimate tank build, but I mean, uh, in a Yamato, you probably want to, honestly, basically, every battleship that's not second, you want to have that eye. Now, if you, if you really hate this skill as much as I do, maybe you decide, you know what, uh, I'm going full tank, actually for my Kremlin. And let's, let's just be clear here, right? This Kremlin would be stronger if you switched fire prevention to that eye. It would just be an upgrade, ship, even if you played aggressively. But, you know, I just hate this piece of shit so much that it, it pains me to click on it. And the Kremlin is a pretty good frontline tank anyway. Also, by the way, for Russian battleships, Emergency Repair Expert is even stronger than for others because it gives you another charge of the, the damage control party. So, you know... Uh, for other ships, there is more of a discussion, I think, between fire prevention and emergency repair expert for, for the Russians. Well, uh, let's move on to destroyers. So, uh, this is what I'm running on my Shimakasi right now. Now, for destroyers or for my old destroyer build, uh, what I've noticed is that if with two more points, I can't recreate my old build. Basically, they I used to take priority target as a one pointer and a in rush as a two pointer. And both have increased by one point, right? And you have two more points. But the issue is you still need that your one skill. So to in order to kind of recreate my old build, I would need 22 points and not 21. So, uh, you know, the, the whole thing about, hey, we want to give you more options rings relatively hollow these days, I feel like. And uh, further enforcing my, my feeling that, you know, priority target and adrenaline rush changes are just, you know, quick cash trap on Wargaming side. So anyway. Uh, torpedo boats didn't get anything too truly exciting, I suppose. So here I have preventive maintenance at tier 1. It helps to stop your turrets from getting knocked out. Incoming fire alert is rather useless. Gun feeder, useless. Uh, consumer specialist, useless. Liquidator. Now, you might be thinking you're a torpedo boat. 30% chance of flooding. Why not take it? Now, honestly, to, uh, Shima torpedoes have a very high base chance of flooding anyway. I don't exactly know the... the uh, formula that goes into flooding to be honest but I feel like it's just really not worth it right Shima torpedoes are like I don't feel like I'm ever in the situations where I'm like oh no I desperately needed the flooding and I didn't get it it feels like not really a situation that comes up many times so honestly I'd rather have more torturers Shima's torturers is abysmal and while you're not a gunboat even in a Shimakaze, you will at times fire your guns. By the way, let's... Uh, since I've been talking here about the Shimakaze and guns, and that might come up in the future, you see, my Shimakaze is my most played ship, and I think I'm doing reasonably well in it. And you can see warships destroyed, 277 by gun batteries and 510 by torpedoes. Now, obviously, the most of my damage comes from torpedoes, definitely. Right? Torpedoes also do, do so much more damage. And sometimes you just use the guns to finish off a target, but very often you'd use them because you're in a gunfight with an enemy destroyer. And yes, you're not a gunboat, and most destroyers out DPM you, but often it depends also who is helping you, right? If you have three cruisers behind you that help focus fire the enemy destroyer, then, you know, it changes the outcome quite a bit. Or if you just have a low health enemy. So anyway, right, I have two one-pointers just because, uh, well, so it turned out right, I had one point to spare. But I feel like preventive maintenance, uh, liquidator, and well, virtual Fushima are well, they are reasonable choices. And you know, I feel like liquidator just doesn't give me enough. Anyway, so last stand, uh, pretty much an obvious choice for destroyers. I wouldn't want to have, I wouldn't want to go into battle without last stand personally. Now, uh, Swift Fish, a uh, pretty great skill, obviously, for a torpedo boat, and somehow I don't feel like I can fit it into my build, which is just a little bit sad. That's how it is. Priority target, great skill, can't fit it into my build. Uh, extra heavy HP shell, well, <laughs> rather useless for, for a shimmer, isn't it? Uh, consumable expert could be interesting uh, if, if you fit it on something with Fighter like a German. 
but you well, need to get it in there. Obviously, a pyrotechnician for more fire if you're more gunboat. And a survivability expert would pick that on every destroyer every time. Uh, superintendent. Superintendent, you don't have such great consumer. If you have, for example, a heal, superintendent is a very nice skill to get. Uh, IFHE, it's uh, well, not something my torpedo boats are care for. Adrenaline rush. I mean, the thing is, yeah, you're going to take damage, especially if you play for objectives. And I always play for objectives. And you will get spotted by carriers, by raiders, and so on. And if you're careful, you're going to get out of their life, but you might take some damage, right? And over the course of a game, this just adds up. And I feel like, I mean, if, if you don't lose hit points in a game, then it's probably going pretty well. And, you know... It doesn't matter what you have skilled, and if it doesn't go so well, then a adrenaline rush will be really helpful. That's how I feel like. Now, torpedo reload, your torpedo boat, uh, AA. <laughs> I mean, you know, you could try to go for that on a Howland or so, because it buffs your anti A and your main battery reload time, but I don't know, I don't really have points for that on a Howland. I'd much rather run adrenaline rush or something like that. And Dazzle. Dazzle is the one skill I was really looking forward to. And so far, I mean, it's a hard skill to test, right? How do you know if an enemy misses you? It's because of Dazzle or is it just because, you know, the RNG wasn't that good or was the aim off or whatever. So it's a hard skill to test. I think it's pretty nice. Unfortunately, there are just not enough points to fit it reasonably into a build for me. So I tried to make it work, I tried to run builds with Dazzle, but I'm relatively close to my old build, unfortunately, because despite adding some new options, you don't really have the points to get them, and they don't really seem to outshine the old options, so there is that. Concealment Expert, rather obvious, Fearless Brawler, uh, what? No. <laughs> I mean, uh, not for my, my kind of boats. Uh, radio Location. Now, I should say for fearless brawlers, right? Uh, if if you are playing a gunboat, like an open water gunboat maybe, but as, as I said, I only play uh, hybrids and torpedo boats and for no ship I play. It's, this is a consideration. So radio location, I love the skill and I still do. I don't want to live without it. I consider dropping it for something like Dazzle, but it just provides so much utility, I don't want to go without it. Swift in silence. Uh... <laughs> No. I mean, how much is ship speed worth? Like 8% ship speed? Yeah, okay, but. But this costs 4 points, and you get. You even have a downside to it, right? You have more reload time for your main battery. And as I've showed this in the stats before, right, even in my Shimakaze, even in a torpedo boat like that, I'm gonna use my guns, right? So. I'm going to get 5, I mean 5% is not the word, but 5% Marilla for what speed? Why? I mean, if you want to be useless sneaking around the zone hall, then by all means, I guess be, be faster useless, I don't know. Uh, it, I mean, I could see that being worth one point, but I have everything beyond that is, I mean, why? There are so many skills that actually do something useful, like, why? Anyway. And then there is a main battery and AA expert. So, I mean, you know, uh, not for the ships that I play, but might be interesting for some destroyers that want to go pew pew. Which uh, brings us to, to basically, well, I mean, you can see my Shimakaze build right now and what I have chosen. Uh, as I said, I tried Dazzle, but for what you could drop Adrenaline Rush and, for example, Grease the Gears and you go for Dazzle instead. I mean, you could drop Adrenaline Rush and go for a Swift Fish and maybe drop the Turret Traverse and go for Priority Target. There are some options what you can do, but this is what I feel comfortable with and what I so far have well, a lot of success with, so this is what I'm going for. But, you know, I mean, I guess at least Wargaming has achieved in some aspect that there are some options, even though it feels a little bit lackluster for torpedo boats because I kind of end up with my old skills most of the time. Now let's see, for example, as a Haaland, this is what I've chosen for the Haaland. And for the Haaland, obviously, I want Superintendent, so I dropped the filter tubes. Now the Haaland is a torpedo boat, mostly, so it would be an amazing skill. And I mean, I, once again, Swift Fish would be an amazing skill, but what what for? I don't want to drop last stand, especially in a destroyer that doesn't even have a smoke skill, right? 
Uh, more on tier would be nice, but it's really not worth adrenaline rush, especially uh, since this captain has boosted adrenaline rush, right? You're going to lose hit points. And this buffs uh, anti-air torpedoes, main guns, like everything, and eventually you know it will kick in. Once again, I don't want to give up radio location or concealment, so this is what I've settled with. Uh, there are options, I think, but, you know, this is kind of what works for me. Which brings us to cruises. So, we are here on the Minotaur. Obviously, the Minotaur is a special case, but the Minotaur is my favorite cruiser, so this is what we're going to start with. Uh, cruisers have uh, last stand for a one pointer, which is uh, an attractive choice, I guess, for some ships. Uh, incoming fire alert. I feel this skill is absolutely useless. Uh, gun feeder. Gun feeder can be, well, obviously, I mean, <laughs> but there are, there are plenty of cruisers, I think, where this is a consideration. Uh, consumer specialist might also be a consideration on some ships. Uh, I have swift fish here because, you know, why not? There isn't really a. Isn't really a good other option. Well, actually, they're last stand, right? I mean, not all. These are these. Those are the only. Does that make sense? If you want, and I don't know. I feel like I ha I have never felt that uh, last stand was needed. So this is what I'm going for. Now here in T2, so as you can already see, I tried to build a bit for anti air here. I have the expert A marksman and the A gunner on this ship. And in my experience, your anti air is somewhat reasonable against tier 8s. It's still a bit less against tier 10s. Don't expect that you can ever stop a tier 10 from dropping unless the carrier is utterly incompetent. But I don't know. I'm still trying to go for some anti-air, and I mean, it did feel, I mean, it, it does something, but is, is it actually worth the points? It's still debatable. I feel like, you know, against the eight carriers, at least I can feel like I'm shooting down a plane once in a while again. So, uh, priority target. <laughs> a Minotaur is a very, very squishy ship, and I really want to know if somebody's aiming at me or not, so that's definitely what I want to pick up. Uh, I mean, there is a spot aircraft, obviously not on a Minotaur, right? But generally speaking, I'm not a fan of spotter aircraft, but your mileage may differ. Consumable enhancements, it's nice because, you know, you can have a slightly longer smoke trail and it helps with uh, hydro being more active. So there is that. Uh, torpedo reload time would be an interest. I mean, you can try to build a, a torpedo mean. Uh, but it's probably more of a mean build, but, you know, go for it if you want. So we have survivability expert. I mean, cruise, uh, the low health cruisers might benefit from this, but I still feel like I usually spend my free points elsewhere. There are some ships where it might be a consideration, I guess, like, for example, Smolensk or so, but for me, it's... Uh, I don't know. I don't feel like it provides enough benefit for cruisers, mostly. And superintendent, oh, I mean superintendent, right? On every cruiser that has a heel, I would put superintendent, which is every high tier cruiser. So, heavy IP. Well, I mean, you might be thinking, hey, Minotaur's kill, but no, no, the guns are too small, you don't get benefit. Uh, honestly, heavy IP shells, I have trouble fitting this into my builds, but you know, there are, there are certain where you might consider it, like a Petro or so. Uh, adrenaline rush, obviously amazing skill. Uh, you could go further into torpedoes, you know, and then there is heavy high explosive shells. You 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 lose concealment unless you have very small guns. The only ship I skilled is on is in Atlanta. <laughs> honestly, I I value my concealment too much. Although, like there are some mean builds, right? Because you have this upgrade gunner, and with top grade gunner you want bad concealment in a way. So you can like combine things like that and not not the consumer module and so on for some meme builds, but not really what um, I saw Trendlers do some meme builds this way, but anyway, so I said a consumer expert obviously. Uh IFHG is still a thing, radio location is still a thing, um outnumbered, the most useless thing ever. And be activated, that's doubtful because from what I've seen people testing, it's usually not activated. Uh, so this, you know, I don't know what they were thinking unless, I don't think they were thinking when they designed this. 
Uh, top grade gunner. So the thing about top gunner is secondary about the reload time. I don't know why that's in there, but sure. The interesting thing is that you get more reload when somebody's in your standard detectability range. Now you might be remembering from earlier, that means the concealment that you have here. For example, Minotaur has great concealment with 9.1. So you need somebody within 9.1 to, to get the benefit of that, which I mean, it can help when hunting destroyers, I suppose, but most of the time it won't work. Obviously, the worse the concealment is, the easier this is to activate. So, you know, can you, you gotta design for yourself. It's, it's not a bad skill, you know. Uh, depends a bit on the ship and your playstyle in general. So, I've taken a look at the Minotaur. Why not look at something like, uh, where is my Des Moines? So, I'm also trying some anti air stuff on the Des Moines. The thing about the Des Moines is that honestly, the Des Moines was a lot more disappointing than the Minotaur. Now obviously the Demoid has defensive fire, so it's a lot of reliant on that being diff without defensive fire uh, against like tier 10 planes, you're just gonna cry, the carrier is gonna laugh and nothing will change. Uh, like, don't expect to shoot down planes with only those two skills without defensive fire. I still need more testing if I wanna keep that that way. I, I want so desperately for my uh, Demoid to actually be able to shoot down planes, but Wargaming just doesn't want it to happen, I'm afraid. So for the Demoin I went for Turret Traverse. Uh, good skill for, well, I guess a lot of the higher caliber cruisers. Uh, I also got priority target and because I wanted consumable enhancements for the Raider. And yeah, I was, was going out here, obviously Superintendent for, uh, for more healing. So Adrenaline Rush because I just love this skill and Concealment Expert. Now, if you don't want to go anti air, you could, for example, code upgrade gunner, and you might be able to get something out of it. It's uh, definitely, well, depending on your playstyle, especially if you are hunting destroyers, you know, you're going to raid them, and then you have more reloads to farm them. That could be rather nice. Uh, Radio location. Not a bad choice on a Des Moines, I would say. Um, heavy HE, I really don't want to lose concealment. Heavy AP, see, the thing is, the the Moin has some pretty good armor piercing shells, but honestly, even if I, like, you're only going to shoot armor piercing at something that's basically giving broadside, and you don't really need 5% more damage in those scenarios, it feels like, and for three points, you, you could get in a lot out of it. Uh, if, like, you could get a lot more out of it for three points. Just just feels like the, the utility isn't there. Uh, so, what else? I mean, Pyrotechnician would be a potential choice, I guess. I mean, if you want to give up any of these others, like if you want to give up your anti you could go for 1% of fire chance. Not a bad choice. Uh, so, yeah. I mean, you know, I like for things like IFHE, if IFG was a good choice before, it still is a good choice, and so on. A lot of things haven't changed in that regard. So, uh, yeah, these are some builds that I'm using right now, and my thoughts on some Captain's Scales so far. Obviously, it has, well, two weeks is in. It's long, but it's not really that long because there are so many ships and so many possibilities to test, and some ships that involve, uh, some skills that involve RNG or so, they take a lot of testing and for example, anti-air builds, you don't always have a carrier and if there's a carrier, the carrier isn't necessarily on your uh, part of the map and so on, so yeah. But I hope you found this interesting and helpful and you know, I'll see you guys next time.